Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The demand is high and the city is attempting to meet the need. Another COVID testing site opens today. And across the nation, the spread of the Omicron variant is crippling hospitals and schools. We're going to have the latest. And back here at home, it is cold out there again this morning. As a matter of fact, Mike is uh, using his wind chill map this morning. We'll talk more about that coming up. The uh, really winter like air has returned. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's January 7th. Hey, happy Friday. Hope you had a great week. What a change uh, this overnight front, even though it was a little cool yesterday morning, uh, could really feel it this morning. We knew it was coming, but uh, no doubt about it. It is a change right now. We're freezing at San Antonio International Airport. Mike, good morning. And that good morning. And that doesn't even take into account that great wind chill graphic. Yes. So and the other thing is it's going to stay with the cloud. We got clear skies right now. Clouds going to move in. So that combined with some other things going to help to keep temperatures chilly all day long. It is going to be kind of grilled cheese and soup weather today. So good. sounds pretty good. Uh, right now, it, yeah, beautiful view at downtown and 32 degrees here in town. Randolph mid 20s and portions of the hill country. We've got some pretty dry air out there. Now a little bit of a breeze that always keeps the air kind of stirred up and doesn't allow the heaviest, coldest air to sink down to the surface. But we will still with this dry air and the clear skies for the time being drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. Speaking of wind out of the north, about uh, 5, 10, 15 miles per hour. A couple of gusts here and there. So wind chills are well down into the mid and lower 20s around the area. And we're going to have enough of a breeze throughout the day that you will be noticing that wind chill. Mountain cedar and mold both dropped down in yesterday's reading and throughout the rest of the morning going for 30 by seven o'clock and a lot of spots even colder than that. Of course, that's not taking into account that wind chill. We will still uh, have those wind chills down in the mid 20s. So bundle up and then the clouds increase throughout the day. 50. That's it later on this afternoon. Tonight may have a little bit of drizzle trying to move on into the area. A couple of light little sprinkles overnight and then very cold this morning. Big warm up this weekend, but another front on the horizon. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Well, happening this morning, another COVID testing site opens to the public. Newest site is over at Palo Alto College on West Villaret. Officials with Community Labs say you can get results within 24 hours at the new site. Just yesterday, the testing site at Alamo College District Office Building on Alamo Street near Josephine open. Another testing site opens on Monday at St. Phillips College here in San Antonio. Well, now on to the fight against the coronavirus on a national level. The Omicron variant spreading setting off records in more than 30 states. We're now hitting more than half a million cases a day nationwide. All this as teens are rolling up their sleeves for booster shots. ABC's Ike Ajashi is in Washington with the very latest. This morning, the surge of the Omicron variant continues to set records. The country now averaging nearly a half a million cases per day. 32 states are breaking pandemic records. Schools across the country are short staffed. For the third day in a row, Chicago classrooms will be closed over the continuing standoff between the city and the teachers union. This is stressful and it's hard for single mothers and single parents and single fathers. Yeah. That's a nine to five job. The surge causing staffing issues in several sectors of the economy. One of the hardest hit health care. The surge now is very different. I'm not seeing a lot of hospitalizations, but I am missing a lot of staff to take care of people. Many of those patients, children, a record number, 4,400 now hospitalized across the country. This week, the CDC signing off on Pfizer's boosters for teens 12 to 15 years old, five months after their second dose. They're rolling up their sleeves all over the country. It's kind of like a seatbelt or a helmet. You may crash, get the virus, you may fall, oh, but it's just that extra layer of protection. That extra layer of protection now being challenged. Today, the Supreme Court will take up the case on the Biden administration's federal vaccine mandate for large employers and for health workers at federally funded facilities. They're both being challenged by coalitions of GOP-led states, business groups, and religious organizations. The White House says the law is on their side. Press Secretary Jen Psaki says the need and the urgency for these policies is greater than ever, and we are confident in the legal authority for both policies. And on the topic of masking, health experts are urging everyone to wear medical-grade masks. In Los Angeles County, indoor workers are already required to wear them, and New York is planning to offer schools N95 masks. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington.
In today's other morning headlines, the President First Lady traveling to Colorado to survey damage from the Marshall Fire. That fire burned more than 6,000 acres and destroyed nearly 1,000 homes and businesses. President Biden will be joined by Colorado's governor and a congressman in Boulder County. Biden's already approved a request from the governor to declare the fire scene a major disaster. The designation unlocks federal relief funding. Investigators in Philadelphia say a child playing with a lighter near a Christmas tree started a fire that killed 12 people. Officials have confirmed that a five-year-old child claimed to be playing with a lighter and set that Christmas tree on fire. The information was contained in a warrant application filed yesterday seeking permission for homicide investigators to search the building. Multiple generations of the family killed had been living in the row home since 2011. Officials say fire alarms and carbon monoxide detectors in the duplex were fully operational. Authorities say the investigation could take weeks to complete. Three white men convicted of murdering Ahmad Arbery are expected back in court for sentencing. In November, Greg and Travis McMichael and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan were found guilty. The judge has limited options because murder carries a mandatory life sentence in Georgia. The judge's main decision will be whether to deny any of the defendants any chance for parole because their convictions carry a mandatory life sentence. Time now, 436 and about 32 degrees for now. Funny man Kevin Hart will need to pull out all the stops tonight. He joins the big fish in the shark tank. We've got a preview. And the Cowboys will have to face their rivals this weekend without their elite defense weapon. Michael Parsons, the details are coming up next. And Transguide right now, it's very early and we're not seeing any problems right here at 410 and Culebra. A quick look outside with a live pan. As we said, it is very cold out there this morning. We're at 32 degrees and boy, we can feel the difference. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. We'll talk about bad timing for the Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy says linebacker Micah Parsons is out for Saturday's game against the Eagles. The star rookie will not travel to Philadelphia. You can also add left tackle Tyron Smith and cornerback Anthony Brown of the list of players now on the COVID reserve list and out set for Saturday's game as well. There's been some speculation that Parsons might. We saw the numbers go up here in the in the past few weeks. So, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I've told you all before, you just got to be cautious and uh, protecting yourself, trying to stay stay away from from the big crowds, limiting the people you're around and um, just doing all the things you can to necessarily control it. Something that we we obviously don't uh, have, have, a, have our fingers on and have control of this thing or even an idea of, of how not to, to get it right now. So just do the best you can to prevent yourself. Wednesday night, two more Cowboys players attended the tribute to Dirk Nowitzki at the Mavericks game, including wide receivers C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. Well, besides COVID, the Cowboys have a number of players listed as questionable for Saturday night's showdown against the Eagles in Philly in their last regular season game. Among them, cornerback Trayvon Diggs, who's not practiced this week due to an illness indicating he may not have tested positive for COVID yet. Safety Donovan Wilson's also been out all week with an illness indicating his test results are not back as well. And running back Tony Pollard has been limited in workouts this week, has a nagging foot injury. So football all weekend long, including on Saturday, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it is on a Saturday. I know a lot of people will be watching. Time now, 441 and about 32 degrees for now. So straight ahead on GMSA, a number of household products are on a recall list. We're going to have what you need to know. An all-female ensemble hits the big screen this weekend and a new action film. That is coming up next. And welcome back. It's about 444 now. Walmart is expanding its in-home service that will deliver your groceries directly to your refrigerator. ABC's Becky Worley has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the grocery delivery wars are about to get a whole lot colder. This morning, Walmart is going further. Delivery people letting themselves into your home and unloading the groceries into your fridge. It's just the ultimate convenience to know that when you pull on the driveway after work, you go inside, all the things that you ordered are put away safely and left carefully out for you to use. It only works with web connected smart locks like the level lock or certain garage door openers. Dry goods are left on the counter while items like milk and vegetables are placed in the fridge. Afterwards, the delivery driver wipes down all surfaces, locks the door and leaves. So will customers embrace welcoming a stranger into their kitchen? And how will Amazon respond? 
It's all coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Becky Worley, ABC News, Oakland, California. And we have an important recall uh, for you this morning. Hundreds of thousands of portable bed rails used to keep adults safe are being recalled. Sadly, this comes after the deaths of four elderly people. 12 in your size, Marilyn Moritz has the latest recalls on products you may have in your home. <coughs> Bed rails are supposed to protect, but now Compass Health Brands is recalling more than 100,000 Carex brand portable bed rails for adults after three reported deaths. All seniors who became trapped between the rail and the bed and suffocated. And there's more. Essential Medical Supply is also recalling 272,000 of its endurance hand bed rails because of the same danger. One person has died. All of these bed rails were sold at medical supply companies on Amazon and Walmart.com. If you have one, stop using it and contact the company for instructions and a refund. Bunk bed warning. Longwood Forest is recalling nearly 40,000 angel line bunk beds with angled ladders. The hazard is a possible gap between the ladder and the bed. A two-year-old boy died when he became trapped. These were sold online at Walmart, Amazon, and Wayfair. AC fire danger. Royal Sovereign is recalling more than 33,000 portable air conditioners after reports of 11 fires or smoke. One fire was deadly. Owners should unplug the units and contact the manufacturer. These were sold at several major retailers, including Costco and Home Depot. And parent alert, Karmas Farr is recalling these two-in-one and three-in-one infant bath seats. They don't meet stability standards and can too easily tip over while baby is in the bathtub. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, we showed you just a little glimpse earlier for you early bird commuters right now. The roads are pretty much yours. 35 is busy 24-7. You know that. 35 at Alamo. Yes, we do have quite a few cars out there. The good news is we don't have any moisture to work with right now, and that is quite the blessing considering how much of a drop our temperatures took yes. late yesterday and in into the overnight hours. Yes, very good news. I always feel like it's a little busier every Friday morning when I come into work. We're trying to get a jump start on the day, right? I think so. I think so. Mike joins us now. So we know it's cold again. You can really feel that front start to ooze in late yesterday afternoon. Yeah, temperatures started to, to drop down. You know, we got up into the mid 60s midday as expected and then dropped in through the uh, mid and lower 50s eventually. And yeah, with those clear skies and finally the wind settled down and really, really cooled off. And now it's going to start to sort of we've plateaued, if you will, a little bit. We'll cool down a couple of more notches, but notice how there are a few more clouds that have already started to work their way in here. And so that is the blanket that's going to be on top of us, which prevents a whole lot more cooling. We do have some winds out there, so wind chill temperatures. 24 is what it feels like here in town and mid to even lower 20s parts of the hill country. The air, and you can feel, obviously, you have to have really dry air to get really cold temperatures, and you can also feel how dry the air is, and it's dried out. Those dew points are down a good 15, 20, or even 30 degrees down there to the southeast compared to this time yesterday in behind that front, and it's going to stay very dry throughout the rest of today. But what happens then later on tonight is we get the wind shift around here and then the humidity dew point temperatures do come up overnight. So what that's going to do yeah, combined with the cloud cover, cloud cover is going to keep temperatures from going up too much today. But then with the extra humidity and cloud cover, we're not going to cool down that much. So pretty much. Once we hit 50 today, we're going to stay basically steady overnight into tomorrow morning. We're also going to start to see some drizzle around the area later on tonight. Uh, some drizzle, a little bit of uh, some sprinkles here and there scattered about maybe a shower or two tomorrow. And the humidity will definitely continue to come back in here as we go on into Sunday. So we had all those blue skies yesterday, and now you can see there's a little bit more moisture coming in here from the uh, west aloft in the atmosphere and like I said also the clouds are continuing to move on in so pretty much a cloudy day today and then again here's the computer models and just picking up a little bit of uh, some light little sprinkles here and there a couple of showers maybe in the overnight hours tomorrow morning um, and we'll have a few of them here and there throughout the afternoon and to peak or two of sunshine is possible then tomorrow and we'll start off with some clouds on uh, Sunday and then we'll see more sunshine in the afternoon. Also, even though today is going to be on the cool side, very warm this weekend, we're going to be back up into the 70s. 
a little bit lower tomorrow, about 70 for a high temperature just because of the cloud cover, but then more sunshine and we're going to see uh, mid 70s on Sunday. Here's the uh, satellite picture right now and you got to kind of squint to see it, but see that this darker shade coming in here. That's the low clouds that are already starting to work their way back in. So somewhat of a sun sunrise this morning, but lots of clouds throughout the day. Mostly cloudy skies. 45 degrees today at noon and then I think basically just cloudy skies later on kind of breezy 50 for a high temperature this afternoon. So definitely on the chilly side and then again temperatures stay pretty much steady overnight. Start off in the upper 40s. Um, drizzle couple little light sprinkles here and there a shower or two tomorrow. Maybe an actual shower thunderstorm well well off to the east. Very warm weekend and then we cool down another front late Sunday. Wow, what a change this morning, though. I mean, it's definitely chilly out there. Bone chilling in some places, especially when you factor in yep. that breeze. I can't even imagine what the wake is going to be like for the hill country this morning. Oh, I, I know. I feel pretty lucky low, to be surrounded by some buildings at some low, point. Low 20s in, in parts of the hill country for a wind chill oh, right wow. now. So. Yeah. I was planning on taking down the outside decorations tomorrow. <laughs> With that not. little bit Maybe of mist later. and drizzle. Mm -hmm. Not really a good idea, so there's my excuse. <laughs> there's your excuse. All <laughs> well right. done, well done. We just hope you stay off the ladder this year. 451, about 32 degrees. In inter entertainment news, a new shark entering the tank on tonight's episode, and the ladies are getting in on action drama. Those stories are coming up after the break. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, six, seven, two, fireball one, daily four, zero, nine, two, three, fireball three. Cash 5, 13, 17, 21, 27, 33. And your Texas two step, 2, 16, 24, 28, bonus ball, 13. And welcome back. It's 454. The ladies are getting in on action films and a new film hitting the big screen this weekend. Kevin Hart is swimming with the sharks tonight on Shark Tank. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. If the new action movie The 355 doesn't look like every other action film out there, that's by design. Jessica Chastain starred alongside Penelope Cruz, Diane Kruger, Lupita Nyong'o, and more. Chastain saying she got the idea when she was on the jury at the Cannes Film Festival in 2017. And I saw all the posters of male ensemble action films raising money, and I was like, why do, have, do we not do this with women? And why is it always like a comedy when it's, you know, an action female ensemble or it's a joke? Horses. The 355 is out today, only in theaters. Streaming today, Ben Affleck, Lily Rabe, and Ty Sheridan star in The Tender Bar, a coming-of-age drama directed by George Clooney, based on the popular memoir by J.R. Moringer. That's on Amazon Prime Video. And tonight, Kevin Hart jumps into the Shark Tank waters as a guest investor. If I can reach back and give opportunities to others, to, to people in my community, uh, you know, to the younger generation that is coming up that should be our future leaders of tomorrow and, you know, our, our future groundbreakers of today and tomorrow, why not? That's a new episode of Shark Tank tonight on ABC. And happy birthday today to Hawkeye. Just Actor Jeremy Renner is man. 51. I got my driver's license. And Saturday, it's the birthday of driver's license. You said forever, now I drive alone. The song was released a year ago tomorrow. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I'm asking folks for options on what to watch this weekend. I hear people talking about a series on Netflix called White Lotus. Oh, have you guys heard yes. anything about I, that? I have. I it's, said it's, it's very a interesting. It's comedy drama. There's only one Wait season. Oh, it's, it's on H HBO, HBO Max. Max. Oh. HBO Max. Yeah. Yeah. Steven just walked in. He's he's nodding and saying, "Yeah, <laughs> I've like heard a, of that." I've heard of that too. I haven't seen the preview or anything, but uh, it was highly recommended to me because I was thinking about checking out other things. They're like, "No, no, no, go to White Lotus," but they told me to not have my daughter in the room. So the the one line summary is the exploits and misadventures of various guests and employees at a tropical resort over the course of one week. Hmm. So so review. So so review. Okay. <laughs> I mean it was, right. it was okay, but it's okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I, I was just told to make sure, you know, the little ones asleep or something. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. And now uh, Steve is putting his mic on. That's why you're hearing, <laughs> hearing all, the, all this right here. Yeah. So anyway, uh, right now it's about 456 and 32 degrees. And despite vaccines and boosters, people are still being infected with COVID-19. We're going to speak with a local doctor and ask about if you should get a COVID test, even if you don't have symptoms. Millions of Americans bracing for heavy snow and extreme temperatures as major storms move in. 
and look at the roads with Transguide out there. There was a look there at Woodlawn. Now there's Loop 410 at Marbuck Road. Stephen Cavazos is here in the studio. We'll be checking in with him very soon. And there's I-10 and Hackberry. Things looking good, at least in those areas. We are blessed with the fact, again, that we don't have moisture in the area. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Federal government is now rationing an approved COVID treatment. Just so how much is coming to San Antonio? The rise in COVID-19 cases is increasing the demand for testing. Coming up next, what doctors are recommending if you believe you've been exposed to but are asymptomatic. And a look outside with live cam this morning. We're at a cold 32 degrees. What a cold overnight it was, but things will be looking a little different coming this weekend. It's going to be really hard to get out of bed this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, January 7th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, it was sort of, you know, hard getting out of bed this morning because it was so cold. However, I knew it was Friday and, you know, that kind of that put, helps. A, put a pep that in my helps. step. <laughs> I like her math there. It's true. Uh, Mike joins us now. How are we looking going into the weekend, Mike? Uh, well, a cold start for today, but then big change, you know, it's kind of a 180 as we go on into the weekend. We'll get it all uh, sorted out. And right now we are still at 32 degrees and we got a nice breeze out of the north, very dry air. So we've got some wind chill to deal with and the combination of the wind, which doesn't let the heaviest, coldest air settle down here to the surface. You need still air and very clear skies to really, really get the colder, even though that's cold enough out there. And I don't know if you can see it on that. Uh, that monitor behind me there, but we do have a few clouds that have already started to work their way in here. One thing for sure, it's not going to warm up all that much today. Yes, we will gain about 20 degrees, but that only puts us at 50. So with all that cloud cover out there, a little bit of a breeze, it's definitely going to be a, a cold day today. No change in the aquifer yesterday and the allergens. Mountain cedar did drop down. Mold also dropped down. Now, this obviously was taken before that reading was taken before the front moved through yesterday and it was kind of breezy. So we'll have to see, wait and see what uh, today's count has in store. Wind chill temperatures right now. Well, when you got these breezes out of the north about, uh, you know, not overly windy, but just windy enough. So feels like 23 here in town. Same thing at Bernie stage and 24 up the road in comfort. We'll have again enough of a breeze today that you will notice the wind chill cloudy, chilly. A little bit of drizzle is going to be possible tonight as the humidity really starts to work its way back in here. So like I said, we've got really dry air now, but that's going to change fairly quickly, especially later on tonight and overnight. We'll have a couple of showers around and it's going to be very warm and humid. As a matter of fact, temperatures, once we hit that high of 50 today, it's going to pretty much stay steady overnight and then we'll make it up into the 70s tomorrow and even warmer on Sunday because we'll have a little bit more sunshine out here. That's not going to last because another front's going to move through. We start off sunny and cool, then more clouds and Hopefully some rain rain tomorrow. Yeah, but it's not going to amount to really all that much around our area, but now the next uh, decent chance is not going to be for about another week or so. Anyway, closer look at the weekend coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on on Friday? Hey, good morning, Mike and TGIF. And our drivers have a real treat in store for them, especially if they're heading out in the next few moments. Let's take a quick look. 37 in Hackberry. There are 16 4 at Vio Creek. Just a few folks out there this morning, and that's no big surprise given that it is only a little bit after 5 a.m. However, we know a few people will be getting their morning started early with us, so let's take you to the map and see what you can expect at this hour. So watch out here if you're traveling through I-35 South and at Ben Zingleman Road. We do have a stall that popped up there on our map, not causing any issues just yet. We're seeing both the north and southbound lanes still pretty much green on the screen. So again, nothing too bad right yeah. now. And a wider look at our map does show that we do have a green little spider web working for us right now. And that's some good news. Even if you are afraid of spiders, we're not going to see anything like that on the screen. But yeah, pretty much green start for the Friday morning. And if you're traveling to San Antonio, Green across the board, 25 minutes in those eastbound lanes from I-10 to Bernie to downtown. 281 southbound, we're looking at 25 minutes if you're coming in from Bulverde. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels, 26 minutes on I-35 southbound. So again, Friday morning has been off to a good start. There was some flashing lights I saw near 410. I'll find out what's going on there coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stuff. Latest numbers are in. And just yesterday, Metro Health confirmed more than 2,300 new COVID cases. 625 patients in the hospital with COVID right now, and 142 are in the ICU and 52 are on ventilators. And another six deaths were also reported. This was yesterday. New this morning, Metro Health will open the second of three new testing sites here in San Antonio later this morning. City and health officials hope these new sites will help relieve the high demand for testing in the city. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, what if someone 
someone thinks they have been exposed but they're not showing any, any symptoms, do doctors think they should still get tested? Good morning, Stephanie, and that's a great question. Well, right now we know the sharp increase in COVID-19 cases has called for more testing locations. And of course, we've learned the Omicron variant is a lot more transmissible. So health experts are recommending anyone if they believe they've been exposed to get tested. But again, timing is everything right now. The CDC is suggesting you avoid getting tested directly after exposure, instead waiting at least five days after known exposure. Remember, exposure means being in contact with someone who is positive for COVID-19 for at least 50 15 minutes or more. Now, experts say you run the risk of getting a false negative if you get tested any earlier because of the virus has had not had time to build up in your, your immune system. Now, the San Antonio Metro Health District says the Omicron variant has led to a drastic increase in daily cases of COVID-19 with the seven-day moving average of new daily cases now over 2,000. We spoke with University Health's lead epidemiologist, Dr. Jason Bowling, who says there shouldn't be any testing hesitation regardless of symptoms. I would suggest that if people are having symptoms, they should get tested because we've seen people with pretty mild symptoms with this Omicron variant. And so it is possible that they could be infected. Now back to the new testing site that opens today. Testing will begin at Palo Alto College at 8 this morning. The testing location is at the college's Performing Arts Center on the West Villa Villaret Boulevard. The location will be open from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday. No appointments are necessary. And for the full details, you can head over to ksat.com. So health officials are saying they have the tools to contain the virus. They're reminding the public to mask up, get vaccinated, and if eligible, get boosted. And of course, if you're feeling sick, just to stay home. Coming up at GMSA at 6, we'll tell you why the booster, why experts are saying the booster is more important now than ever before. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Medical professionals are encouraging everyone to get their shots to better protect themselves. There are treatments for the virus, but Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says the stock of monoclonal antibodies, one of those treatments will only go so far. There's only about 3,000 allocated to the state of Texas that could be used every week in, in the state, which means we will have a limited supply uh, to be able to do that. So Judge Wolf and Mayor Ron Nirenberg are now sending a letter to the United States Department of Health to try to get the supply of remdesivir. The outpatient treatment has been used to avoid hospitalizations and COVID-19 deaths. More than 110 million Americans on alert because of another winter storm, and for many of them, it's hitting just in time for the morning commute. Heavy snow starting to fall in the New York City area after moving up from Tennessee, Kentucky, and Virginia. Wind chills could drop to 50 below zero in parts of the upper Midwest, and the mountain snow in the Pacific Northwest is piling up to levels we have not seen in 20 years. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the latest. This morning, a bitter blast of winter weather is arriving along the East Coast, and the timing could not be worse with the heaviest snow hitting during the morning rush. Travel can get rough in a hurry, leading right into that morning commute. This is custom built for a nightmarish morning commute. You want to stay off the roads and let the road crews do what they can. Three to six inches of snow are expected over a widespread area where major cities are already dealing with COVID-related worker shortages, including a lack of snowplow drivers. Some towns are paying drivers up to $300 an hour to plow the roads. The sanitation department in New York City will try to keep the roads clear this morning, even with more than 20% of its staff out sick. In the end of the day, we have a very robust number of staff to be able to man all of our a full source spread of complement, a large number of plows on extended tours. We're gonna to shift our operation to two 12 hour days. People in Kentucky took a major hit from the storm. Drivers were stranded for up to eight hours in this pileup involving dozens of vehicles outside Lexington and south of Louisville up to 30 cars were involved in this chain reaction crash it comes just days after a snowstorm stranded hundreds of people on Interstate 95 in Virginia some of them for more than 24 hours that area expecting significantly less now from this storm but this message from the state's governor this morning stay off the roads Monaco Sarabdi ABC News New York well right now it is 509 about 32 degrees the highly anticipated all-electric Silverado truck make it, makes this debut. We're going to give you a look next. An air carrier cutting flights all together as people continue having trouble getting flights home. We will tell you why. 
And a quick look outside with live cam this morning. Very chilly out there. I'm sure I'd have to tell you to grab a jacket. You're probably cold inside your home as well. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 512. More flights continue to be canceled in the wake of the COVID surge. Alaska Airlines is cutting 10% of flights from its January schedule to rebuild its operation. The airline canceled almost 16% of flights since Christmas due to COVID staffing shortages and winter weather. The company says the cuts will allow it to reset. U.S. carriers canceled hundreds more flights yesterday. We're getting a closer look at the new electric Chevy Silverado pickup. GMS says the truck will, GM rather, will, says the production will go into production in, uh, in spring of next year. Some versions of the vehicle will be able to go up to 400 miles with fully charged batteries. That is 100 miles further than the maximum range of the Ford F-150 Lightning pickup, which is GM's biggest competitor. And time now, 513 and about 32 degrees out there. An unlikely team bands together to save Earth from the moon. More on this movie plot that's coming to a streaming service near you. We have details after the break. What would you like? I think we everything is included. Gonna be falling, falling, falling in. Did you and your husband enjoy your stay? Yes. Visit secretsresorts.com slash love unlimited for a special love unlimited package in savings up to 40%. I lost 26 pounds and I feel incredible. With the new personal points program, I answered questions about my goals and the foods I love. I like that the WW personal points plan is built just for me. Join today for 50% off at WW.com. Hurry, offer ends January 10th. From the very first touch, Pampers, the number one pediatrician recommended brand, helps keep baby skin drier and healthier, so every touch will protect like the first. Pampers. In today's Tech Bites, new details about the design of the next iPhone. Online tech reports claim the iPhone 14 could have the biggest changes in years for the iPhone, including a pill-shaped camera cutout at the top of the display. The iPhone 14 is expected to be released in September. WhatsApp is launching a new feature that will let you know when people are talking about you in a group chat. Currently, when someone in that group replies to a message you've posted, you get a notification. But from now on, you'll be notified when someone simply mentions your name. Finally, Black and Decker's new bartending machine. The Bev uses a pod-like coffee machine and regular liquor bottles to make drinks in about 30 seconds. You can choose your drink strength and it cleans itself between drinks. It comes out in May for about $300. Just be sure not to mix the two or it'll make for an interesting morning. Those are your Tech Bites. Well, there's Steven's next device for the countertop in his kitchen. Wow. You know, I'm trying to do dry January, but I'm only we're only seven days into that, so we'll see how the weekend goes. <laughs> <laughs> February, February, oh, perfect. Uh, and my birthday is in February. That's and a you, great yeah. birthday. Yeah. You've got room right there on the corner. Of that thing. <laughs> it's coffee. <laughs> That's how I get my of morning course. started early. Uh, but let's take a look at the roadways because we did have an issue here off Loop 410 at Ray Ellison. Uh, talk to our friends over at TransGuide. There were some flashing lights out over there. Looks like this was a crash that thankfully has since cleared out. And you can see uh, in these lanes of uh, traffic, we're seeing things moving pretty easily and freely through that area. So that's some good news. And our first responders obviously worked quickly to get this thing cleared up. Hopefully that driver is OK. But Let's take a look at the roadway because we do also see some progress here with a stall that was detected off I-35 Southman at Ben Zingelman Road. That has since cleared out, so that's some good news. And as we take a wider look at the map, we still are off to a pretty quiet start as we inch closer to that weekend time. And if you are going to be heading out of town, maybe on a road trip to go see Grandma and Grandpa, well, we have these gas prices for you from AAA. Right now, Bear County, the average gas price is reported at 278, and around the state, we're looking at 290. And around the country, we've actually gone up two cents due to some crude oil prices at three. 30. Now that's been fluctuating over the last few months, typically because of the holidays. But right now we're seeing that gas price at 3:30. So something to keep in mind before you head to the pump. But right now things are moving pretty easy here at 4:10 at Ray Ellison. If it stays quiet, we'll talk more construction coming up in a few minutes. Thank yes. you, Stephen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, construction for Friday. Or I oh guess, yeah, uh, we can look construction ahead to the too. Yeah. yeah. It's cold. Yeah, very cold. <laughs> Airpl airplane coming at you, Mike. Yeah. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs>
And notice how that airplane is now. I kind of sit here like a you know cat <laughs> looking at it anyway. Uh, the airplane's landing up to the north because we do have winds coming in here out of the uh, north, and we've got mostly clear skies right now. Temperature stands at 32 degrees. Good flying weather because when you have this really heavy, dense, cold air, everything's basically just jump off the runway. Uh, 24 is the temperature out there in Comfort, and flirting with freezing down to the south and southern portion of Bear County. Wind chill temperatures 23 here. In town, so we've got a decent breeze again coming in here out of the north, but that's going to be shifting around as the day rolls on. Now, yesterday we did make it up to 68 and actually got up to 87 in Catula before the front moved on through and only in the 50s up to the north. And then today, look at the consistency around here 50. Boy, that's a number to play on the lottery tonight. Uh, all around the area. And some areas won't even get out of the upper 40s because of the cloud cover around here. And with the an okay breeze throughout the day. Wind chill is definitely going to be something to, uh, to deal with. It won't be brutally windy conditions, but just enough of a breeze out there. All right, we had a lot of clear skies overnight, and that's what allowed temperatures to drop down along with obviously the dry air. And now we're starting to see these clouds build back in here. You can see as this rolls on through that gray shade, that dark shade of gray moving on in here. So the clouds will continue to fill in throughout the rest of the morning and then also the afternoon. We're going to have basically mostly cloudy skies all afternoon around the country uh, pretty much on the the bookends up to the northeast and to the northwest the latest huge storm system to move on through here and dump the feet of snow especially in the lake effect snow up there right right around the Great Lakes in Michigan but also moving through the mid-south and now up to the uh, northeast and then the next system is up there to the northwest but again all that's still continuing to work its way pretty much straight west to east on top of snow on the corners and then just ridiculously cold temperatures once again 31 degrees below zero that's the actual air temperature up there in international falls so like i said clouds will continue to thicken up throughout the day today and now this computer model of course the long range models tend to broad brush things as i always say but we will have the chance for a couple of uh well just some light showers maybe some drizzle tonight a couple of showers around primarily in the first portion of the day tomorrow and actually may see a hint of sunshine tomorrow afternoon. We start off with some clouds on Sunday and then we'll see a little bit more in the way of sunshine later in the day on Sunday. Another front moves on through here. That's going to clear us out, cool us down because it's going to be a very warm, humid weekend. Then the clouds are going to come back in fairly quickly by the uh, middle part of the week and we'll have another chance for some rain once we get into perhaps late Wednesday into Thursday of next week. So the forecast today, 45 degrees, mostly cloudy skies again clouds continue to kind of thicken up throughout the morning they're working their way in here from south to north and then 50 that's it for a temperature this afternoon and breezy enough to where it'll feel much cooler than that a little bit of drizzle around if you're heading out tonight just a couple of specks here and there and a few showers some uh, well, one or two of them around tomorrow rain's not going to be a huge event in our area maybe off to the east tomorrow yes 70 high temperature 74 on sunday warm and humid this weekend then that all goes away. Another chance of rain late next week. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. Time check right now, about 523. And if you're just tuning in, we're at 32 degrees out of San Antonio International. Yes, very cold before this weekend. And Star Trek fans, the new Picard TV series may be on hold. Can you guess why? More on the story coming up. to heal our future is to go back and repair the past. Production has shut down on Star Trek Picard due to a COVID outbreak. Sources tell The Hollywood Reporter filming halted on Monday after more than 50 production team members tested positive. The series studio would not confirm any details, citing HIPAA. Eagles continue to fly. The band has extended its upcoming Hotel California 2022 tour, adding 12 additional dates to the North American trek. The new shows go on sale January 14th. If you're watching this thing, you know by now a huge problem is heading our way. An emergency meeting is being called our usual place immediately. Free bagels. Well, that's one way to advertise a movie about the moon crashing into Earth. Lionsgate has released the final preview of Moonfall, the latest flick from disaster auteur Roland Emmerich stars John Bradley, Patrick Wilson, and Halle Berry. Moonfall crashes into theaters February 4th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
And time now, 527 and about 32 degrees out there. The Biden vaccine mandates being reviewed by the U.S. Supreme Court. We have a preview of the case. Also coming up after the break, police are investigating after a man was killed on a roadway. We're going to have a live report. One man makes a fatal move. Police say he was hit and killed while trying to cross this west side highway. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It is cold out there. You can see, by the way, Katrina was appropriately dressed. It is very, very chilly and it's going to kind of stay that way for a while. Good morning to you. It is Friday, January 7th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Definitely grab the warm coffee this morning if you have a chance and yeah, bundle up and keep that jacket. This time you won't have to like have layers, I guess not in the near future. Right, you want to keep a jacket handy all day long because temperatures, even though we'll gain about 20 degrees between now and later on this afternoon, that only puts us up to right around 50. And as you can see, we've got clouds which are starting to work their way in here. We had a lot of clear skies overnight. Of course, yesterday was beautiful, especially in behind that front. But now this cloud layer is moving on in and that's just going to continue to work its way in from south to north. And as that moves on in here, that's obviously going to help keep us on the, the cooler side. 32 degrees, so right at freezing here in town. Still very dry air, so we had two of the ingredients overnight to really get cold. Obviously, the cold air has been filtering on in here, but we had clear skies and dry air, but still a bit of a breeze, so that keeps the air sort of stirred up and prevents the heaviest, coldest air from settling down to the surface, but then you get the wind chills to deal with. So, again, about uh, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15 mile per hour winds, and that puts wind chills down to 21 Bernie stage, 22 New Braunfels, and 25 is what it feels like right now at Randolph. Mountain Cedars on the moderate side, but of course, this reading was taken yesterday prior to the front moving through, so it's going to be interesting to see if those winds really kind of shook up the uh, Mountain Cedar trees, and the updated count is going to come out just after 7 o'clock this morning. Mostly cloudy skies at noon, only 45, and then basically just cloudy skies this afternoon. 50 for a high temperature, a little bit on the, the breezy side. And then tonight, I think we see one or two little specks of drizzle just kind of here and there as the moisture starts to return. And notice temperatures, once we hit our high, they're really not going to be dropping down all that much. And then much, much warmer over the weekend. We'll talk about small rain chances this weekend and maybe some way down the road. Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos. Anything big going on yet? Uh, not yet, Mike. I'd say that the roads are pretty peaceful right now. 35 at 37. You could see 35 at Loop 410. Traffic's moving, but we're not seeing a whole lot of activity out there. It's still very early. Few folks getting their morning started early with us. There's 35 at Alamo. The scenes of trans guide shots have been looking pretty good so far, but we did have a crash earlier. Thankfully, that cleared out rather quickly, but 37 at Hackberry. The morning is getting moving for some, but as we take you to the map, you're not seeing any delays just yet. We still have pretty much a green start to the morning 35 37. The those lanes are open and we're not seeing any slowdowns, but of course you always want to make sure that you're driving carefully and make sure you're checking that tire pressure in the car. A lot of folks can experience some uh, decrease in their pressure due to the weather. So again, watch out for that. Make sure that you are checking that before you get out on the roadways and if your travels take you through San Antonio, of course we have those inbound times for you at this hour right now. still pretty green from Seguin on I 10 to the downtown area with 30 minutes in those westbound lanes. We're looking at 22 minutes if you're traveling in from Lavernia on 37 northbound or 87 northbound, pardon me, and 28 minutes if you're coming in from Floatusville. So not too bad. Again, the morning is off to a pretty great start. So we'll talk some construction spots and things you need to be on the lookout for coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. In the middle of a west side highway is where a man's life ended. San Antonio police say he was hit and killed while trying to cross Loop 410 near Culebra Road. Katrina Rubber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand this led to a closure of the highway for a long time. Well, good morning. Although everything is back open now, police did tell us at the time that they would have to shut down the lanes here of Loop 410 for about three hours while they investigated the crash. Now, that did happen late last night and into the morning hours, but again, everything open now. Well, this crash happened on the eastbound lanes of Loop 410 near Culebra Road. Police say the man tried to run across the highway but was hit by two different cars. Both of the drivers stopped to help, and police say it does not appear that they were under the influence of anything, so they do not expect to charge them in this case. The paramedics tried to help the man, but there was nothing they could do. He died of his injuries. 
Based on what police say, it sounds like this was just an accident and that those drivers did nothing wrong. That man who was killed has not been identified yet. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. The virus is impacting several upcoming events. The Asian Festival and the Texas Folklife Festival are being postponed until next year. And now a change is coming for the Martin Luther King Jr. March here in San Antonio. The MLK Commission Board decided last night to cancel the physical march. It is billed as the largest in the nation and was set to take place on January 17th. The commission plans to put vaccine clinics in place near Pittman Sullivan Park. We need to do better as a community so we can all be a part of the march next year because these barons are not stopping. The pre-march events were also canceled. Some local colleges have changed plans for the spring semester because of the latest COVID surge. Our Lady of the Lake University here in San Antonio will hold virtual classes only through at least January 23rd. St. Mary's University says classes are delayed until January 24th. Trinity University will start January 31st and UTSA says most courses will be held online for the first three weeks of the semester starting January 18th. Well, 535 right now, will your company require you to get a COVID vaccine or get tested every week? That's what the Supreme Court is considering starting this morning. In fact, they'll be looking at two of the federal government's vaccine mandates. And as CNN's Brett Conway reports, what they decide could have long-term implications beyond vaccines. The vaccine mandate debate front and center. Today, the Supreme Court will consider two of President Joe Biden's controversial COVID-19 vaccine mandates, the vaccine or testing requirement for employees of large businesses and the vaccine mandate for health care providers who get funding through Medicare or Medicaid. If you're thinking, wait, hasn't the Supreme Court already decided on some of these mandates? You're right, they have. But these cases are a bit different because they involve federal agencies, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, and whether they have the kind of authority to issue these mandates. The states challenging them believe the mandates are unconstitutional because they disregard state sovereignty. The Department of Justice will argue the mandates are critical to the country's COVID-19 response and recovery. With White House Press Secretary Jin Psaki saying the need and urgency for these policies is greater than ever, and we are confident in the legal authority for both policies. The Supreme Court will have to determine whether the mandates should take effect while the questions of legality and constitutionality continue to play out. Whatever the justices decide, it might foreshadow the way the court could handle future cases regarding executive power. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And Disneyland Fund in Hong Kong coming to a screeching halt this morning. Hong Kong City officials forcing the park to close their doors again amid the growing number of COVID-19 cases. January 20th is when it hopes to reopen. Hong Kong Disneyland says it will extend passes for people who already bought tickets. The closure does not include its hotels. Two Wisconsin firefighters were killed on line of duty Thursday en route to an accident. Their fire truck was hit by an 18 wheeler coming the opposite direction as they tried to use one of those emergency crossovers. The fire truck burst into flames and both firefighters were killed. The driver of the semi was not hurt. Wisconsin authorities are still investigating the incident. And the names of those who were killed will be released at a later date. In Wisconsin, fire crews are still monitoring the scene of a massive warehouse fire and the cold weather there isn't helping. This is a scene in Superior, Wisconsin. The fire chief there says the freezing conditions made any water they were using quickly turn to ice, making it especially dangerous for crews. Fortunately, no injuries have been reported. Time check 538, about 32 degrees. A school superintendent in New York has a clever idea to make sure his students have an instructor in the classroom despite record numbers of teachers calling in sick. And we're taking a, taking a look rather at the latest COVID models here in Bear County. And a quick look outside with live cam. Very, very, very cold outside. We're at 32 degrees. We kind of expected to prepare for this cold front, but uh, things will be a little different this weekend. We'll be right back.
The Omicron variant leading to a massive teacher shortage in many places, including New York State. Now schools are pulling out all the stops to make sure kids are being educated. Superintendents in the Syracuse area reaching out to alums for help. Six schools in the area are currently closed thanks to lack of staffing and subs. Reaching, so they're reaching out, they are reaching out to college juniors and seniors who are home for the holidays and willing to work. Meanwhile, the school board is reviewing guidelines that might allow teachers with COVID to return to the classroom faster than before. If the new guidelines are approved, asymptomatic teachers could return five days after testing positive for COVID instead of being out for 10 days. 542, about 32 degrees. And straight ahead, a look at the total health experts are using to predict COVID case numbers locally. 545, with the rise in COVID cases, some experts are using modeling, a complex math equation to help predict levels of cases. John Paul Baraja speaks with the man who uses math and science to make those projections. COVID modeling is a complex math equation that is helping predict when we can finally see a decline in cases. Dr. Juan Gutierrez is the chair of mathematics at UTSA and is predicting a peak in Omicron COVID cases in two to three weeks. But he still has a warning. Until the world is vaccinated, we will be subject to the risk of COVID. This could keep coming back. The next variant, Sigma, could emerge at any point in time. Infectious disease specialist at UT Health, Dr. Ruth Bergren, also stating today that from what they have seen, they too believe we will see a peak soon. It will probably see a peak in about mid-January. We expect it to steeply drop off. The math takes everything into account from how infectious a specific variant is to vaccination rates to rules and mandates in specific areas, then puts it into an equation for a computer to calculate. Susceptible population, exposed population, in this case symptomatic and asymptomatic and then recovered. It then provides a predicted range of cases and deaths. For mid-July of 2021, Gutierrez estimated 50,000 to 200,000 cases and 750 to 3,000 deaths. The actual number of cases was 100,000 and 1.4 K or 1,400 deaths. And as we try to move past the pandemic, Gutierrez has a message for the community. Our future is at stake. So please get a vaccine. Please use face masks until this passes. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Okay, 546, we know it's freezing out there right now. We'll talk to Mike about that more coming up and how the weekend weather is shaping up. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. At last look, it looked like there were no problems on the road. Yeah, yeah, it's good. cool out there, like the weather, right? <laughs> so <laughs> it's pretty empty as well. So you can see Transguy does show a few folks getting their morning started early, hopefully heading to grab a cup of coffee. Uh, I'd probably recommend a warm coffee this morning, but Mike can tell you a little bit more about that later. Right now, let's take a look at the road. 1604 video, 410 at Culebra. Not a lot of people out there this morning, but for those that are going to be traveling in the next few minutes, you're in some good luck here because there's not any issues that where you're going to encounter right away, but we know as the morning does go on, those issues tend to pick up. However, we are inching closer to the weekend, so let's take a look at some construction spots to be on the lookout for. We're going to start here with some concrete work that's going to be going on later today. This has led to the single southbound lane closure uh, from at Valley High Drive. Now, this will be going on from one in the afternoon to four in the afternoon. That will be wrapping up today, so that's some good news. But for our friends up in New Braunfels, you got to start planning for, the, for those alternative routes because we have some road work or utility work. I should say that's going to be lasting for quite a while up near Queenie Road between I-35 southbound the frontage road there and Perryman Street. They're going to be actually doing some infrastructure or utility work involving a water line. Uh, this will lead to that area to be closed off for, uh, up until March of this year. So we still got some ways to go. We're going to continue to follow this uh, particular project up on 35. So just watch out for that and make sure that you are planning accordingly. But right now, wider look at the map does show that we are still thankfully off to a green start, keeping our fingers crossed that it does stay that way, guys. Yeah, we hope so. Crossed. Yes. That'd be nice. Mm -hmm. uh, mittens and gloves cross, cross too. <laughs> yeah, uh, kids have to wait for the bus stop this morning, you bundle oh, up and scarf goodness. and everything, the whole nine yards because it is cold out there. And notice how in this picture you can see how we've got a few minutes, a little hard to see, but the clouds have started to work their way or continue to work their way in here, I should say, from south to north. And they we will continue to cloud up over the course of the next few hours and throughout the rest of today. We'll jump past that map. Let me go back to this one. Temperatures at 32 right now. 31 Randolph uh, flirting with freezing.
freezing in locations Hondo, Divine, Rio Medina. So in your backyard, obviously, maybe below freezing and really cold out there in portions of the hill country. So we had once that front moved through yesterday, you felt temperatures drop down a little bit, got down into the 50s by late in the day and the air really started to dry out and we had clear skies overnight, very dry air, still a bit of a, a breeze out there. But that's why temperatures did obviously help to drop down when you have two of those three ingredients and then the cloud cover started to, to work its way on in here. And so that's really going to act like a little bit of a blanket. So I think we stopped cooling down maybe another couple of degrees throughout the rest of the morning, but then cloudy skies will help prevent us from warming up all that much throughout the day. There's the dry air that we had yesterday, this darker shade of gray in the upper level uh, layers of the atmosphere. And here comes more moisture moving on in here upstairs. And then also the moisture is really going to start to move back in as it is with this cloud cover. You can see the clouds moving on in here satellite picture looping on through moisture continues to work its way back in here later on this afternoon. So as the humidity goes up, then temperatures won't be able to drop down. So once we get up to about 50 then we're going to stay pretty steady overnight and then continue to go up from there. So whole different story tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be about 20 degrees warmer than today's high temperature. Big system off to the northwest and this doozy of a system off there to the uh, northeast. This is the one that produced uh, saw some reports about 18 inches of lake effect snow in portions of Lee of the Lakes in Michigan and then also up there around DC, New York, and that had moved through the uh Tennessee Valley and really dumped a bunch of snow up there. And then as far as we're concerned, we see the clouds continue to increase throughout the day. Maybe a little bit of mist or drizzle tonight and then tomorrow, a couple little sprinkly showers here and there throughout the day and Rain chances, unfortunately, are not going to be that great tomorrow, uh, but off to the east, we are going to see a better chance for some rain, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms well off to the east. Sunday, we see some sunshine. We continue to warm up. Then another front comes through, clears us out for Monday, cools us back down. So what warm up we do have that gets knocked back down. Then the clouds come back in here for uh, next week. After Monday, we're going to see a lot of clouds, especially going into Wednesday and Thursday, and another system is going to try and work its way in here to give us a chance of rain, maybe later Wednesday, and then better chance of rain as of right now, still a week away, but it's going to be Thursday, and got to keep our fingers crossed for that one because, boy, we sure use a bunch of rain around here. All right, 45 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature then is going to make it up to 50 that's it. Well below normal by oh, good 13 degrees or so. And then tomorrow we're going to start off uh, again. Steady temperatures overnight and into tomorrow. Start off in the upper 40s and then get up to 70. A couple little sprinkly showers here and there. Really humid then, especially overnight into Sunday and pretty warm and humid Sunday. Monday we cool back down some rain next week. Well, at least, you know, over the weekend, we can give our heaters a little break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the but then the humidity is going to kick back in. So. <laughs> hey, it's good for your skin, right? Again, the eternal optimist. I love her. Hydration. Yes. <laughs> Plenty of it. 552, about 32 degrees. And Final Fantasy fans, the game is now offering a new expansion for gamers to explore. That's next. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, 672 Fireball 1, a daily four number, 0923 Fireball 3. Cash 5, 13, 17, 21, 27, 33. And your Texas 2 stuff, 2, 16, 24, 28, bonus ball 13. 555, one of the biggest online multiplayer games, has a new expansion. Rick Damagella levels up with a look at Final Fantasy XIV. And so you venture forth unto the unknown. Final Fantasy XIV is among the most popular massively multiplayer online role-playing games, with its director recently revealing it has more than 24 million players. Those gamers and anyone looking to join the persistent world have a new expansion to explore. Final Fantasy XIV is an insane story in the video game industry. This is a game that originally started life in 2010, and it was so poorly received, Square Enix killed it and started over. And then it came out in 2013 on the PlayStation 3 and Windows PC. <laughs> 
and it was much better. It was improved, but Square Enix kept investing in it and the players kept being uh, infatuated with it. And it has grown over time. There have been four massive expansions applied to the game and it has grown uh, in scale and in production quality. And it is now one of the most popular MMORPGs in the world. We've come too far to back down now. This is easily one of the most beautiful, uh, you know, open world, massively multiplayer online experiences that has ever been crafted and fans could not be happier. It will be ours again, a world free of sorrow. The latest expansion, Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker is out now. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Time check about three minutes till. Coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, millions of Americans fall prey to identity theft every year. We have some of the latest tips on how to protect your money. And a man is dead this morning here in San Antonio after he was hit by two vehicles on the west side. Katrina Weber is staying on top of this story as it continues to develop. She'll be live with the details. And Steve Cavazos on duty, covering traffic for you on this Friday morning. That's got a nice ring to it. There's 37 at Hackberry. You're watching GMSA, one hour still to come. Health experts are recommending the public if they believe they've been exposed to COVID-19 to get tested and are saying the booster is more important now than ever before. Details coming up next. The spread of the Omicron variant is causing staffing issues all across the country. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, how hospitals and schools are addressing his staffing problems. Coca-Cola taking steps towards the alcohol business. More steps will tell you about the Coke branded cocktails set to hit store shelves. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 32 degrees on you. We were having a cold morning when one of my heaters died. <laughs> yeah, that happened this morning. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 7th. So we're going to need some more information yes, there. So yes. what, hap what happened? We have well, we have an old house, and, and we do have uh, you know central heating, cooling, whatever. But we also have space heaters in the bigger rooms. Okay. And one of them this morning, well, it wasn't going all night. My husband put it you know late at night, under, like one in the morning. But by two thirty in the morning, it was. It Kaput. Was, it was done. Hmm. I was like, okay, let me Work. unplug this and <laughs> we'll move Work. on. It was working hard and then hardly working. Mike yes. joined us yes. now with more on our Friday forecast. And yes, we knew this cold snap was coming yep. again. And where do we go from here? Uh, not too much warmer. It's going to stay pretty chilly all day long. And, you know, talking about your space heater not working correctly, this mm -hmm. is, is a good point. Be really, really careful with any sort of, you know, space heaters, anything like that. Keep them away from any sort of combustibles. Don't use anything from outside to heat inside, like grills or anything like that. All right, here's uh, we got some clouds that are moving on in here, and we had a lot of clear skies overnight. And of course, it was beautiful yesterday as that front moved on through, and that has ushered in the, the cooler temperatures. And we had a couple of the ingredients to really allow things to, to cool down. We had those clear skies and um, very, very dry air, and so temperatures have dropped down. But now with the clouds starting to slide on in here, that's kind of putting a lid or I guess you could say a bottom on any more cooling because it's going to act like a little bit of a blanket. 23 at Comfort, 32 here in town, Randolph, and then right around freezing just above it over there in Medina County, Southern Bear County. But we do have a breeze out there, so we've got a wind chill to deal with. So even though the temperature may not be below freezing, it sure does feel like it just about everywhere we go. 19 is the wind chill right now at Lost Maples. Mountain Cedar is on the moderate side from yesterday's count. Mold is low, but this number was taken before the front moved on in here, before the winds kicked up. So it's going to be interesting to see if those winds did shake up the mountain cedar trees. And of course, that update is going to be coming out in about, uh, say, an hour, hour and a half or so. This morning, we may fluctuate another couple of degrees, but the clouds will continue to thicken up. And the wind is going to be kind of swinging around to the east a little bit more. Enough of a breeze out there with that 45 degrees at noon. You'll feel it. A little bit of a wind chill to uh, deal with and then we'll only top off at about 50 later on today. Now the wind will continue then to kind of swing around to the southeast, pull in more humidity and that's going to hold temperatures pretty steady overnight. So thermometer is really not going to move all that much overnight and then we really warm up this weekend. Couple little sprinkly showers as well. We'll get it all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos.
Tapasos. Been pretty quiet up to this point. Pretty still, quiet. Still, yeah. Still, very quiet. Okay. Very, very quiet, Mike. Uh, let's take a look around town, see how this Friday morning is shaping up. We can see that 281 at St. Mary's. We don't have a whole lot of people out there so far, just a few cars, but you can see US 90 at 35. Looks like it may be picking up in that area. Other shots like 281 here show that it's extremely quiet, so that's some good news, especially if you have to get your morning started early, maybe head to work or maybe head out of town. You're not going to find any big problems, at least at this hour, and that's obviously reflected right Right here along our map. We're not seeing any red on the screen. All the lanes are wide open right now, but that doesn't necessarily mean just hightail it out of your uh, neighborhood. Make sure that you're driving carefully. We want to make sure that you can get to where you need to be on time, but of course, more importantly, safely. Now, if your travels, of course, take you right through the San Antonio area, let's take a look at those inbound times for you. If you're coming in from 37 and Pleasanton right now, those northbound lanes are looking pretty pleasant with 28 minutes right now, 19 minutes from eastbound. If you're coming in from Highway 90 from Castroville and just 16 minutes minutes from Lytle and 35 in those northbound lanes. So no delays just yet. You can see we're green across the board, but we know at this hour that's when things tend to change. We start to see more people out there and that's when those problems start to present themselves. So just make sure that you're taking it easy. We're going to continue to watch these roads closely, but as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A man is dead this morning after he was hit by two vehicles on the city's west side. Police say the man tried to cross Loop 410 near Culebra Road around 10 last night when he was hit. He died at the scene and the drivers of both vehicles did stop to help. They are not facing charges. Turning to the coronavirus here at home, there are 625 patients in our hospitals right now. 142 are in the ICU, 52 are on ventilators. Metro Health reporting another 2,300 new cases of the virus. There have also been six new COVID-related deaths here in Bear County. New this morning, Metro Health will open the second of three new COVID testing sites here in the metro area later this morning. City and health officials hope these new sites will help relieve the high demand for testing in the city. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. And Jonathan, what if someone thinks they have been exposed but they are not showing any symptoms? Should they still get tested? Good morning, Stephanie, and they should absolutely get tested. Health experts say they've added more testing sites to meet the demand, and community labs say they have the capacity to test about 40,000 people a day, so there shouldn't be any testing hesitation. But knowing exactly when to get tested is important in getting the right results. The CDC says you should avoid getting tested immediately after exposure. Instead, waiting at least five days after known exposure. Remember, exposure means being in contact with someone who is positive for COVID-19 for at least 15 minutes or more more. Now, experts say you run the risk of getting a false negative if you get tested any earlier because the virus has not had time to build up in your system. We spoke with University Health's lead epidemiologist, Dr. Jason Bowling, who says if you're eligible to get the booster, now is definitely the time to get it. People that have just had two doses of the vaccine but not, are not boosted, there's data that shows that, that protection against this Omicron variant is only around 30%. 33%, so a third. Health officials say they have the tools they need to contain the virus and remind everyone to mask up, get vaccinated. And again, if you're eligible, get boosted. And of course, stay home if you're feeling sick. Now, Mark, Stephanie, back to the testing sites that will be opening today. Testing will begin at Palo Alto College at 8 this morning. No appointments will be necessary. But of course, for more information, you can head on over to ksat.com. It's going to be taking place at the college's Center for Performing Arts on West Villaret Boulevard from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, no appointments will be necessary. And of course, Coming up at GMSA at night here from Dr. Bowling on whether or not you should be swabbing your nose or throat. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. All right now to the national fight against coronavirus. The Omicron variant is spreading, still spreading, setting off records in more than 30 states. And we are now hitting more than a half million cases a day. This as teens are rolling up their sleeves for booster shots. ABC's Ike Ajachi has more. Good morning. There's a big hearing today from the Supreme Court. They'll be discussing the fate of the Biden administration's vaccine mandates, mandates the White House believes will stand. This morning, the surge of the Omicron variant continues to set records. The country now averaging nearly a half a million cases per day. 32 states are breaking pandemic records. Schools across the country are short-staffed. For the third day in a row, Chicago classrooms will be closed over the continuing standoff between the city and the teachers' union. 
this is stressful and it's hard for single mothers and single parents and single fathers yeah. that's a nine to five job. The surge causing staffing issues in several sectors of the economy. One of the hardest hit, health care. Many of those patients, children, a record number, 4,400 now hospitalized across the country. This week, the CDC signing off on Pfizer's boosters for teens 12 to 15 years old, five months after their second dose. They're rolling up their sleeves all over the country. It's kind of like a seatbelt or a helmet. You may crash, get the virus, you may fall. Oh, but it's just that extra layer of protection. That extra layer of protection now being challenged. Today, the Supreme Court will take up the case on the Biden administration's federal vaccine mandate for large employers and for health workers at federally funded facilities. They're both being challenged by coalitions of GOP-led states, business groups, and religious organizations. And on the topic of masking, health experts are urging everyone to wear medical grade masks. In Los Angeles County, indoor workers are already required to wear them, and New York is planning to offer schools N95 masks. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Three men convicted of murder in the deadly chase and shooting of Ahmaud Arbery are due back in court today for sentencing. In November, a Georgia jury found father and son Greg and Travis McMichael, along with their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, guilty of murder and other crimes in the February 2020 killing of the 25-year-old. Superior Court Judge Timothy Walmsley has limited options because murder carries a mandatory life sentence in Georgia. The judge's main decision will be whether to deny any of the defendants a chance for parole. The McMichaels chased Arbery in a truck after seeing him running in their neighborhood. Brian joined the chase and recorded cell phone video of Travis McMichael shooting Arbery with a shotgun. Two parents charged with, uh, with their son in a deadly school shooting up in Michigan are returning to court to ask for lower bail to get out of jail. James and Jennifer Crumley have been locked up since December 4th, unable to meet the $500,000 bond. They're hoping a judge is willing to reduce it today to 100,000. The Crumbly is charged with involuntary manslaughter from the November 30th shooting at Oxford High School, which four teens were killed. They're accused of making a gun accessible to their son, Ethan Crumbly. The 15 year old faces a separate court hearing today. He's charged as an adult with murder and other crimes. In your morning consumer news, America's trade deficit with the rest of the world surged in November to a near record high. Slowing exports and rising imports pushed the deficit to just over $80 billion. The Commerce Department says that's a jump of more than 19% in a month. Why don't you go ahead and just and, take this one? <laughs> sure. Coca-Cola is taking another step into the alcohol business. Later this year, a new line of canned cocktails under the Fresca brand will hit store shelves. It's part of a deal with Constellation Brands, the company behind beers like Corona and Modelo. Constellation says half of Fresca buyers already use it as a mixer. 611, about 32 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, winter coming down hard on millions of Americans this morning. We're going to have a look at the severe snowstorms across the country. Outside with, and I said this earlier in the newscast, we're somewhat blessed this morning. Yeah, it's freezing this morning, but we haven't had days and days of cold, and there's no moisture in the area right now yet, but that could change this weekend. We'll check in with Mike coming up as we're looking live outside on live cam on your Friday. Good morning. Time now is 615 and not a whole lot of issues out on the roadways. So far, Friday morning has been off to a great start as we take a look around town. There's 64 in Medio. Very quiet there, but it is getting busier in some of these spots like Loop 410 at Gulebra. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier in this hour, as that morning does pick up, so do those issues. So watch out because we do have a stall detected right here off Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. Thankfully, not causing any slowdowns just yet, but sometimes these stalls do tend to last a little while and other times they tend to resolve pretty quickly. So just just make sure that you're driving carefully and a quick reminder for our friends up in New Braunfels. You're going to have to start looking for alternative routes because there is some utility work that's happening near McQueenie Road between I 35 South and the frontage road there and Perryman Street. Now that's going to be closed up until March 4th of this year. That's due to some uh, utility work involving a water line. So going to last a little while over the next few weeks. We'll start to look at alternative routes for you and hopefully that won't impact your commute time. But as we take a wider look at the map right now, this hour you're pretty much in a good shape. But just again, watch out for that stall vehicle off 410, but right now the morning is getting moving and I'd say again off to a pretty great start guys.
Not too bad on the roadways, but definitely bundled up at the yeah. bus stop. Just allow yourself a little extra time to uh, warm up your car, warm up the school bus. And uh, if you're waiting for bus, kids are waiting for a school bus, make sure they bundle up because temperatures, a lot of folks are at freezing or close enough to it. We do have partly cloudy skies right now, but the clouds are going to continue to work their way in here, thicken up, and later on this afternoon, 50, that's it. And enough of a breeze that uh, you're going to notice it, and it's going to make it feel chillier than that throughout the rest of the afternoon. But this will kind of warm me up looking at this beautiful picture. Oh, right there. Sea Drift, San Antonio Bay. Great picture. Thank you very much for that one. All right, there you can see the cloud cover, which has moved on in. We had clear skies overnight, which allowed temperatures to drop down. Now the blankets on top of us, so we're going to stay fairly steady, maybe dropping down another couple of degrees. Then you got to factor in the wind, and so everybody has wind chills, and uh, most everybody feels like freezing, and then some. 18 is the wind chill right now at Lost Maples, 25 at the airport, and 26 at Randolph. The humidity has dropped down. Of course, that front moved on through here, and compared to this time yesterday, dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere have dropped down a good 15, 20, even 30, 35 degrees down there to the southeast. Remember all the humidity, or excuse me, all the fog that we had uh, down there along the, uh, the coastal plain yesterday. And humidity is going to remain low for the first part of the day. Then the wind shift around out of the east and these uh, dew point temperatures do come up and overnight they're going to be up to around 50 or so. So what that means is temperatures cannot drop down below. Air temperature can't drop down below these numbers. So overnight temperatures once we hit 50 are going to stay fairly steady and then continue to go up and we're going to have kind of a, a humid weekend basically with these uh, and more clouds around here as well tomorrow. And then we're going to have another front moving on through as we go in toward the middle part of the week. There's the clouds that have started to work their way on in here and they will continue to thicken up off on the bookends. We've got a big storm to the northwest, big storm to the northeast and in the middle, ridiculously cold temperatures, 30 below. That's the actual air temperature. And then there's wind chills to deal with on top of that. For us, like I said, clouds continue to uh, thicken up. We may see a couple little sprinkly showers overnight tonight tomorrow a few showers mainly well off to the east is the better chance of rain then we go into the uh, middle part of uh, next week we have another system which is going to be sliding in here and that's going to give us as it looks right now a better chance at some rain which we could desperately use so for today again clouds continue to thicken up throughout the day temperatures won't well they will go up 20 degrees but again that only puts us at 50 for a high so 45 today at noon and then 50 for a high temperature today. Kind of breezy. Now, tomorrow overnight, we stay fairly steady as far as temperatures are concerned, right around 50, upper 40s, and then get up to 70 tomorrow. Very warm and humid, especially on Sunday, 74 degrees. Then that next front moves through here cools us down, clears us out to start the week, and then hopefully that rain chance comes in here by the middle to latter part of next week. Well, more than 110 million Americans are on alert because of another big winter storm, and for a lot of them, it's hitting just in time for the morning commute. Heavy snow starting to fall in New York, and wind chills in the upper Midwest could drop to close to 50 below zero. Meanwhile, in the Pacific Northwest, mountain snow is piling up to levels that uh, those folks haven't seen in about two decades. Decades. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has more. This morning, a bitter blast of winter weather is arriving along the East Coast, and the timing could not be worse with the heaviest snow hitting during the morning rush. Travel can get rough in a hurry, leading right into that morning commute. This is custom built for a nightmarish morning commute. You want to stay off the roads and let the road crews do what they can. Three to six inches of snow are expected over a widespread area where major cities are already dealing with COVID-related worker shortages, including a lack of snowplow drivers. Some towns are paying drivers up to $300 an hour to plow the roads. The sanitation department in New York City will try to keep the roads clear this morning, even with more than 20 percent of its staff out sick. In the end of the day, we have a very robust number of staff to be able to man all of our a full soft spread of complement, a large number of plows on extended tours. We're going to shift our operation to two 12 hour days. People in Kentucky took a major hit from the storm. Drivers were stranded for up to eight hours in this pileup involving dozens of vehicles outside Lexington. And south of Louisville, up to 30 cars were involved in this chain reaction crash. It comes just days after a snowstorm stranded hundreds of people on Interstate 95 in Virginia, some of them for more than 24 hours. That area expecting significantly less now from this storm. But this message from the state's governor this morning, stay off the roads. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York.
Friday morning, 621, about 32 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the Cowboys are set to finish the regular season against the Eagles, but they'll have some roadblocks ahead of them. We're going to have the details. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages 6 and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Welcome back. Dallas Cowboys have a Saturday night matchup to conclude the NFL season. You heard that right. That's tomorrow night taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas will be out without a handful of players due to the league's health and safety protocols, including Micah Parson. That's a big deal. Good news. The Cowboys will still be in the playoffs even if they lose this one. Kickoff 715 tomorrow night in the city of brotherly love. Houston Texans also in action this weekend against their division rival, the much better Tennessee Titans. While Houston's already been eliminated from the playoffs, they can help play spoiler for the Titans. Tennessee is currently trying to hold on to the number one spot in the AFC play playoff picture. The Titans can clinch that spot with a win against Houston. A loss against the Texans uh, would hurt their chances. Houston's already beaten Tennessee earlier this year. Texans Titans set for noon on Sunday. And time now, 625 and 32 degrees for now. So details about the next iPhone design starting to come out. We're going to have that ahead on GMSA. For right now, Stephen Cavazos is tracking traffic for us over in the traffic lab right now. Got the thumbs up so far, which is great news going into break. You're looking live at 37 and Indian Hills. It's Friday. Everybody take a deep breath. We made it to the end of the week. Police are calling it an accident. A man hit and killed by not one, but two different cars. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Outside with a live cam, they said it would be colder this morning. We are sitting right around freezing out of San Antonio International Airport. We've been there pretty much all morning long so far. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's January 7th. Yes, we did. Happy Friday. And it's so good that we listen to Mike and we come in prepared. I brought my heavy jacket. <laughs> oh, thank yes. you. Yes, yeah, everything she just said, I promise I, I'm with her. Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for keeping us all informed. And then Mark will say, what did Mike say? Anyway, no, uh, we, temperatures, yes, did drop down overnight. And then the, the clouds have moved on in. And you can see some of the clouds off in the distance. We're not seeing any sort of glow of the, the morning sunrise at all. And so now that's put a blanket on top of us. And, you know, we may drop down a fluctuated degree or two, but we're not going to continue to really drop down all that much. So still at 32 humidity, the dew points down to 16. So very, very dry air. In theory, we could continue to drop down. But again, we got the cloud cover and a little bit of a breeze out there. But of course, then that breeze takes these numbers, which kind of northern half of our area is at our below freezing and you may be below freezing there you know in your backyard obviously but we have that uh, breeze which is not overly strong enough though to put that wind chill down into the uh, mid to low 20s and even teens out there in lost maples mountain cedars on the moderate side mold is low both of those numbers dropped down significantly from the previous day but of course this was taken yesterday morning before the front moved through so when the updated count comes out we'll have to see if those uh, trees got shaken up by the wind yesterday cloudy chilly throughout the day with the cloud cover. We're not going to warm up all that much 50 for a high temperature today and maybe uh, some drizzle tonight. Just a, a possibility of that. And then uh, a couple little sprinkly showers overnight. A few showers tomorrow. Not really a big deal further off to the east of us. Yeah, more significant rain. It is going to be warm and the humidity is definitely going to be coming back in here. We're going in through the weekend, decreasing clouds and then we'll get another front moving on through here. It's going to be very warm on Sunday. But then that front is going to get rid of the humidity and then cool us down to start off next week. But that's not going to last very long. 
More clouds move in here, maybe some rain by the uh, mid to latter portion of next week. Closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Traffic authorities, Stephen Cavazos, anything big? Uh, no. Okay. Not yet, not yet, but uh, I guess the only update we have right now are just a few stalls and a lot more people out on the roads. Let's take a closer look right now. 281 at 410. It's getting busy, but we still see just a lot of light traffic out there. There's US 90 at 36 where it's picking up and same here at I 10 at Woodlawn. You can see a lot more people getting up early and probably going to grab that cup of coffee before they get their morning going. But uh, as I mentioned, as although the traffic is picking up, we've been seeing just a few stalls out there this morning. The first one we're going to bring your attention to is right here off Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. We showed you this earlier. It wasn't causing any issues, and although we are seeing more people out there, the roads are still pretty green in that area, so some good news. But again, we're seeing that trend continue a little bit over here off I-35 southbound at Eisenhower Road. Same thing. No issues just yet with the traffic that's going through that area, but anytime you see those flashing lights and emergency lights, make sure to give that driver plenty of room, move over, or slow down. So wider look at the map shows, again, off to a green start. I mentioned this right now. I mean, there's really not a lot going on road wise, but again, you got to take it easy out there and head off into your weekend safely. And if your travels take you through San Antonio from any of these communities, the good news is it's still green across the board. 632 right now, so we're going to continue to keep a close eye on these roadways, but keep in mind things could change pretty quickly, so just be sure to play it safe. Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say two drivers who hit and killed a man on a west side highway did nothing wrong. It happened while that man was trying to run across Loop 410 near Culebra Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Katrina, based on all the information we have so far, it sounds like there won't be charges filed in this case. That's what investigators did say, at least early on. They say both drivers did stop and try to help that man who was hit. Now, this crash happened around 10 o'clock last night on the eastbound lanes of Loop 410 near Culebra. San Antonio police were out here and shut down that side of the highway for a few hours while they investigated this crash. They say it appears that the man, a pedestrian, was trying to cross the highway when he was hit by two cars. Although those drivers and then paramedics tried to help the man, he died here at the scene. Now, he has not been identified just yet. And again, police say it does not look like any charges will be filed against those drivers, that they didn't do anything wrong. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, two men in the hospital after rolling their truck on the north side. This happened around 1.30 this morning on Bolverde Road and Green Spring. Police say both men in their 30s were not seriously hurt. There's no word of alcohol or speed was a factor in this crash. Questions remain this morning after a shooting on the west side of town. Police say they found a man with a gunshot wound to the hand around 10 last night on Freeman Drive near Woodland Hills. Officers tell us that man did not give them many details other than the shooting happened at another location. That man was taken to the hospital. Now to the growing number of COVID cases here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting another 2,300 new cases of the virus and critical city services are being quite hard right now. More than 800 San Antonio city workers called out sick yesterday due to COVID. That includes more than 150 police officers and nearly 90 firefighters. The good news, help is on the way. More than 400 state nurses are expected to help our area, but COVID is impacting their travel. Been a little problem getting them here uh, because of what we see and read about every day, the thousands of flights that have been canceled around the nation but they're starting to trickle in. Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council says the new CDC quarantine guidelines will help ease the burden on hospital staff. Some hospitals like University Hospital provide on-site COVID testing with quick test results to check if hospital staff members are indeed infected. The virus also impacting several upcoming events, including the Martin Luther King Jr. March here in San Antonio. Yeah, listen to this. The MLK Commission has decided to cancel the physical march. It is billed as the largest in the nation and was set to take place coming up very soon on January 17th. The pre-march events were also canceled. The commission plans to put vaccine clinics in place near Pittman Sullivan Park. We need to do better as a community so we can all be a part of the march next year because these variants are not stopping. While the march will not take place, the board will decide what activities may still be allowed to happen. They will figure that out during next Monday's meeting. 
Well, it is now easy to find out where you can get a free test in San Antonio. Use your phone's camera and scan the QR code in the lower left-hand side of your screen. All right, right there. The newest test site open today at the Alamo Colleges, actually yesterday at the Alamo Colleges office building on Alamo near Josephine. Another site opens today at Palo Alto College on West Villarette. Community Lab says you can get results within 24 hours at these new test sites. And we also have a QR code if you need help finding a place to get your vaccine or booster. Doctors continue to encourage people to get these shots to better protect themselves. There are treatments for the virus, but Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says the stock of monoclonal antibodies, one of those treatments, will only go so far. There's only about 3,000 allocated to the state of Texas that could be used every week in, in the state, which means we will have a limited supply uh, to be able to do that. Judge Nelson Wolf and Mayor Ron Nirenberg are trying to get a supply of remdesivir. The outpatient treatment has been used to avoid hospitalizations and deaths. You can read more about these stories on our website at kset.com. Can your employer require you to get a COVID-19 vaccine or get tested every week? That's what's before the Supreme Court starting this morning. In fact, they'll be looking at two of the federal government's vaccine mandates. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, what they decide could have long-term implications beyond vaccines. The vaccine mandate debate, front and center. Today, the Supreme Court will consider two of President Joe Biden's controversial COVID-19 vaccine mandates, the vaccine or testing requirement for employees of large businesses and the vaccine mandate for health care providers who get funding through Medicare or Medicaid. If you're thinking, wait, hasn't the Supreme Court already decided on some of these mandates? You're right, they have. But these cases are a bit different because they involve federal agencies, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, and the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, and whether they have the kind of authority to issue these mandates. The states challenging them believe the mandates are unconstitutional because they disregard state sovereignty. The Department of Justice will argue the mandates are critical to the country's COVID-19 response and recovery. With White House Press Secretary Jin Psaki saying the need and urgency for these policies is greater than ever, and we are confident in the legal authority for both policies. The Supreme Court will have to determine whether the mandates should take effect while the questions of legality and constitutionality continue to play out. Whatever the justices decide, it might foreshadow the way the court could handle future cases regarding executive power. I'm Britt Conway reporting. We are learning new details about the design of the next iPhone. Online tech reports claim the iPhone 14 could have the biggest changes in years for the iPhone, including a pill-shaped camera cutout at the top of the display. The 14 is expected to be released coming up in September of this year. WhatsApp is launching a new feature that will let you know when people are talking about you in the group chat. You heard that right, when people are talking about you. Currently, when someone in that group replies to a message you've posted, you get a notification. But from now on, you will be notified when someone simply mentions your name. Black & Decker is set to release a new bartending machine. The Bev uses a pod like a coffee machine and regular liquor, bot liquor bottles to make drinks in about 30 seconds. You can choose your drink strength and it cleans itself between drinks. Comes out in May and it'll cost you about $300. Looks fancy. 640, <laughs> about 32 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, some best practices for spotting a scammer. Welcome back at 643. Have you ever been a victim of a scam? Well, you're not alone. In fact, experts say 47% of Americans experienced financial identity theft last year. That cost around $100 billion. Wow, $100 billion. So how are scammers getting your money? by pretending to be someone else. Often starts with a simple call or email personating a person or a company you know to trick you into giving them your money. The grandkid imposter scam is really hot right now. If you receive a call from family saying they're in trouble, it's likely the scammers that have hacked into your social media. If they pressure you to send money immediately, hang up and call the family member. Another scam going around, refund imposters who claim they want to deposit a refund directly into your bank account, but really they're just going trying to get your bank account information. So some key things to remember, never give sensitive information to strangers. And if you get a call or message that seems like it could be a scam, it probably is. 
Right now it's 644. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. It's been a very quiet morning out on the roadways. There's 410 at Culebra, 410 at Jackson Keller. We're seeing a lot more people out there at this hour, but we're not seeing a whole lot of problems. So that's some really great news because we're at morning rush. So obviously you can see from some of these shots at Trans Guide, it's definitely looking busier, but thankfully those issues have stayed to a very minimum uh, look here at the map. As we take you right here to Saul still off there, 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. That hasn't been causing any problems, but as I mentioned a few minutes ago, those stalls seem to be popping up a lot more now that the morning is getting going. Let's take a look Joe, over here where we have a second stall of I-10 eastbound in New Braunfels Avenue. Same situation where it's not causing delays, but anytime you see someone that's experiencing trouble out on the highways, you want to make sure you give them plenty of room to get on, uh, get their situation fixed and hopefully get some help and be on their way. But right now, wider look at the map shows. Yeah, not a whole lot going on right now, just these stalls, but although we're not seeing a whole lot of issues, we're seeing a lot more cars. So if you are going to be heading out in the next few minutes. Just remember to take it easy out on the roadways. We're driving off into the weekend. We want to start off on a good note, guys. Yes, yeah. we do. A couple of years ago, I had gotten a phone message uh -huh. saying it was from CPS and that my power is going to be cut off and I called the number back uh -huh. and it had the exact CPS little tone yeah. that you yeah. dial yeah. into and that was all part of the whole scam. Oh, oh it was wow. it was legit it, scam. It was a legit scam because mm -hmm. when they started asking for, you know, um, uh, gift card Oh, wow. There you go. Yep. Yeah. And so called CPS. They said, no, 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 no. Big scam going on. You know, so. we all like to think that we're smarter than the scammers, but it happens all the time. Yeah. I almost yeah. fell for one last year, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's especially scary if you yep. have uh, someone claiming uh, that they know your, your grandchild. Your grandchild exactly. is in trouble and oh, you don't yeah. talk to them that much. What yeah. do you do? We're yeah. all vulnerable there. All right, so we have another pretty picture. This sponsored by the law firm of Michael Parker and Osterhage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a gorgeous shot there. A lot, I don't know what kind of flower that is. Is that an iris? No. An orange flower. Thank you very there much. You okay. Uh, <laughs> small tail butterfly. Beautiful picture, and thank you very much for that one. All right. We're not seeing any glow of the sunrise this morning. The clouds have moved on in. We had clear skies overnight, loud temperatures to drop down. Now the blanket's on top of us, so we'll stay pretty steady. And then with this blanket of clouds, it's going to be hard to really warm up all that much, obviously. Wind chill temperatures down in the 20s. Feels like 20 Bernie stage and 18 lost maples and 23 is the wind chill right now in New Braunfels. Humidity is really going to start to come back in here, especially later on tonight. So what that's going to do is hold temperatures pretty steady. Cloud cover keeps us at about 50 and then we don't drop down from there. Cloud cover is going to act like a blanket and then also with that extra humidity around here. So humid start and as that humidity comes back in here, maybe a little mist and drizzle tonight, a couple of sprinkly showers around tomorrow. Humidity sticks around into Sunday. Then the next front moves on through here. That's going to clear us out for the first part of next week. And then it starts to return. And that's when we have, even though that's going to be the better chance of rain. Small chance of rain tomorrow, but mm, not really all that great. Here's a satellite picture, and there's those clouds which are coming in here from the south. They are covering most of Bear County as of right now. May see a couple little holes in the clouds here and there, but pretty much just mostly to just cloudy skies today. Big storm system off to the northwest, big one off to the northeast. You got any travel plans today? Uh, check because there could be some uh, potential flight delays. And then some ridiculously cold temperatures up there to the north and wind chill readings that are just almost unbelievable up there. 30, 35 degrees below zero and then even colder than that. But all that really cold stuff stays up there to the north with those upper level steering winds. The jet stream right up there along the northern tier of the United States. So that's what keeps everything up there. It's going to keep us on the mild side. We're actually getting into kind of an overrunning situation, especially as we go into next week. We get the little front moving through Sunday into Monday and then that low is going to start to push a bunch of uh, moisture back in our direction and then that will start to work its way in here by Wednesday, Thursday, as it looks right now, and that's going to give us that chance for some rain. 45 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 50, so we're going to be about anywhere from 10, 15 degrees below normal. Enough of a breeze with that 50 degrees and cloudy skies, we're going to notice it. And then tomorrow, we start off in the well, upper 40s, 50 degrees, again, steady temperatures overnight. Some mist drizzle, a couple little sprinkly showers around, make it up to 70 in the afternoon. Really warm Sunday morning with all that humidity will clear on out. Then the front moves through here, gets rid of the humidity, clears us out to start next week, and then the rain chance middle of the week. 60s, though, next week.
mm -hmm. little more mild. Yeah, yeah, and kind of all over, I mean, up and down, sideways, and everything else, temperatures. So we have options. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 649, about 32 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, poetry from prison. We're going to tell you about one woman who is encouraging the incarcerated to write and reflect. Road trip continues tonight for the San Antonio Spurs. They'll look to keep some momentum going after a win up in Boston the other night. They're taking on the 76ers in Philadelphia at 6 o'clock our time tonight. Then they'll be taking on the Brooklyn Nets in New York. That game is set for 11 a.m. Sunday morning. Should be a great pair of games. Be sure to check out the highlights on Instant Replay Sunday nights at 11 right here on KSAT 12. Go Spurs go! Taking a look outside with live cam. It's a cold 32 degrees out there and you're going to keep your jacket for most of the day. We'll be right back. One man was no match for two cars. San Antonio police say he was hit by both and killed. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That crash happened here on the eastbound side of Loop 410 at Calabra Road late last night. Now, San Antonio police say that man was trying to run across the highway when he was hit by two cars. Both drivers did stop and try to help. Police say it did not appear either of them was on the, under the influence of anything, and they're calling this an accident. Paramedics couldn't do anything to save the man. He did die here at the scene. The medical examiner is still working to identify that man. And again, police say no charges expected against either driver involved. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. More COVID-19 testing sites are being made available to meet the demand. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Health experts are advising the public to still get tested if you're not showing symptoms, but believe you've been exposed. The CDC says you should avoid getting tested right after exposure, instead waiting at least five days after known exposure. And remember, exposure means being in contact with someone who is positive for COVID-19 for at least 15 minutes or more. Experts say you run the risk of getting a false negative if you get tested any earlier because the virus has not had time to build up in your system. Now, health officials say they have the tools they need to contain the virus and remind everyone to mask up, get vaccinated, and again, if you're eligible, get boosted, and of course, stay home if you're feeling sick. And back to the new testing sites that open today. Testing will begin at Palo Alto College at 8 this morning. The testing location is at the College's Performing Arts Center on West at Villaret Boulevard. The location will be open from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday. No appointment is necessary, and for full details, you can head on over to ksat.com. And coming up at GMSA at 9, here from Dr. Bowling, who says whether or not you should be swabbing your nose or your throat. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Jonathan. And let's go and take one last look at the roads. We have made it through GMSA without spotting any big issues, but be on the lookout. Right now, the traffic is moving through this area pretty smoothly, uh, not spotting any delays just yet, but be again, be on the lookout because we still have this stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg. Jump down here shows another stall off I-10 eastbound at New Braunfels Avenue, Mike. Plenty of clouds, and you can see one little uh, squeak right there along the horizon of the sun trying to squeeze through. 34 degrees right now in town, but we do have wind chill temperatures. Everybody's down in the 20s. Not going to warm up all that much. 50 for a high later on today, and then a very warm, humid weekend. Maybe a little drizzle, a couple of sprinkles tomorrow, and then we'll be clearing out by Sunday. Hey, team, have a good weekend. Yeah, have a good weekend. Everybody? Thank you. Happy Friday, but we'll see you back here at 9. Thanks for watching. GMA is next.